What's going on guys? Hit pause here for the last part of this tutorial. In this part we're basically going to get the maps out into UE4. Now I did go ahead and rebuild this at 2048 and just so you know uh, if you've been watching along I took out the thermal weathering or whatever that was. Um, this one here. the Yeah, the thermal weathering. Just because it was adding a lot of time to the build and not really producing anything even really useful for me. Uh, the erosion was already taking care of everything. So this is the final terrain. It looks okay. Uh, I do have the maps already outputted, but basically your height map should be a raw 16. Okay. And your, again, I'm doing this map here just to demonstrate how to get an image out of here and use that as a mask. Okay. So I'm only going to use one for now just to show that. So here we go with the flow map, right output the disk. You know, pretty much do that anytime. Hit OK. So then we come over here into UE4. OK. So we're going to come into textures. Um, you can see I've started one. This is where the video screwed up. So we're going to come here and we're going to go to recent places and we are going to bring in this flow map texture really quick. Just do that first. Okay, there it is. Just wanted to bring that in. And now we're going to make the terrain. So we hit the landscape tool here. And what we're going to do is import from file. Come on, I haven't changed anything. Okay, so we import from file. And then the height map file, we're going to pick that here. So we'll go back to recent places. And we pick that star mountain. And it's going to give us kind of a low res preview of the whole thing. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is first off, is that you can actually see it here um, we have an extra component meaning we have one extra grid tile around the whole rim of the entire thing that we don't actually want and that's due to the number of components here being set to 17 we actually want these to 16 but let me go ahead and demonstrate to you what it's going to look like and if you see this in your terrain this is the problem so as soon as we say import it's going to come in there it is. Okay, that's exactly what we had in World Machine. Looks really nice, except we have this. Right? We have this border around the whole thing. So that's because we had that extra component. So what we need to do is we need to actually basically delete this landscape. We'll make a new one. Um, it's already, everything's here. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and drop this to 16. Just remember, this should be a power of 2. Uh, 17 is certainly not a power of 2, but 16 is. So once we do that, you'll notice if I take this, I can, you can see that I can actually add additional components to the end of the whole thing. Okay? And that's actually doing it on both sides, okay? in one direction or the other. You can see those like so. Okay, so in this case, we want it 16 by 16. We hit import. Oh, notice here 2033. Pay real attention, uh, close attention to that uh, on the import. I'm going to do that again because it's very important. So we're here now. We have 16 by 16. And notice that when we're doing 16 by 16 with this particular height map, our overall resolution is 2033. That is the resolution that this map needs to be set to, okay? This image is a 2048, and that might confuse you into putting the landscape coordinate size at 2048, but that is not correct. What's correct to get it to truly line up is to use this value here, the overall resolution. And once you've imported, there's no real way to get this value back. So if you're always doing a 2048 and you're always doing 16 quads, don't worry about it. It's always going to be 2033, but if you're doing various different sizes and everything like that write this down you know do yourself a favor and write it down because it it is very important because look it's gone now I, there's no way for me to if I come back to manage or any of this that information's not there anymore okay so but you also but you do notice that I lost that extra piece of trim around the outside because I dropped that component size down okay so here's the, this now let's go ahead and just let's just make a material uh, so I can show you how this works and we'll just call this test here okay so the test material is going to get applied straight to the landscape but I think I have to do it this way by using this you know the place tool click on it then I should be able to put that in there 
uh, which is going to want to compile, but there's nothing in this material yet. So we're just going to go ahead and start working on it. Let's bring in this flow map. So we drag that up here, wait, and then we can drop it down. And all we're going to do is just throw this into the diffuse, just so you, I can show you guys how it lines up. So if we leave this as such, and we hit apply, we're going to have a major, major error. It's going to restart this. It takes a little moment. You also notice that we have a uh, checkerboard of dark darkness going around between each component. Uh, that is simply due to the fact that we don't have lighting built. Um, the quickest way around that, but isn't obviously the final solution unless you're going for this, is to just turn your lighting environment dynamic. And the fastest way to do that is to select this light and set it to movable. You'll immediately see all that stuff get deleted. Okay. So here's that texture. So without any texture coordinates, you can see that it's like defaulting to a size of like, I don't know, 64 by 64 or something, and it's just tiled across the whole thing. So we need landscape coordinates. So if we just type land, we can say landscape layer coordinates. And remember that 2033? Well, we're not going to use that. We're going to use 2048 to illustrate that this is incorrect because we think, oh, well, our texture is 2048, so this should be 2048. That is, in fact, incorrect. Things will not line up perfectly and I'll show you that. It's going to be very close though and it can confuse you so you got to be careful. The star is still noticeable by the way. If you watch the tutorial you know I built this out of a star. Alright, so there we go. As you can see at first glance, oh yeah it's okay. That's not bad. But in reality it's shifted by a few pixels here and there. The peaks are not in the correct spots. Um, we are in fact off, but like I said, see, it's you can kind of see it here. You can kind of see that the real edge is right here, but our pixels are here. This should be here. So let's see if that fixes. I may be I may be wrong about that, but we'll put this to 2033, and then we'll compile that, and we'll take a look at what that does out here. Okay, so here was that edge. So I'm going to put my cursor right on there, and we'll just see if the texture lines up. It, it, the texture might not actually be in that in that way, you know, laid out that way. I don't really know, but I kind of think that maybe it, w it should be. Yep, right there, pretty much, right along that line. So now you can see that it's, everything is now perfectly lined up with the way that the terrain is. Okay, so a couple of things that we did to get this to happen. Number one, out here in World Machine, we lost the plus one, okay? Because if we don't lose the plus one, this goes to 2049, which means my flow map would not be a power of two, which means UD, UE4 would give me an error. It would import it, but it would give me a glitch. The way to fix it after the fact could be A, rebuild, okay? Or B, just take it into Photoshop and resize it. That's what I would do, just because it's faster than rebuilding this for seven to ten minutes, you know? Um, so we did that when we got the height map out. Very important that the height map be raw 16, okay? Um, and then when you come into UE4, when you import it, just remember that um, you want your components to be a power of 2, okay? And the overall resolution is your landscape texture coordinate size, okay? Whatever that l um, overall resolution becomes, that's what you need to make your map. So you'll see that this lines up right down this peak the way the textures are. See how it's dark right there. Okay, if we go unlit, okay, you can see how it all flows out. Now this is just a simple black and white image, right? So it's it's a mask. We can use that as a mask, no problem. Let's take a look at I don't believe that there's any noise or anything. This project that I have here does not have any starter content, so I can't really go much farther than this, guys. I think this is about where we're going to end the video. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. The, it, everything should work out just fine um, for you guys, too. Like I said, the only thing I don't have any experience with is that I do not know how to do the tiled export, but I know it's possible. I just never tried it, never needed it. And again, I don't like using these flow maps, even though they can make some very, very, very cool effects on the terrain. Um, and I think that they're good to have in addition to shit. I wouldn't rely solely on these things because the main reason for that is once I go here and I say sculpt, 
and I want to sculpt myself a little hill right here you see what's happening you know it's just ir completely irregardless of the texture so this feature now has absolutely no place here whatsoever okay it doesn't fit in with anything anymore so I'd have to undo that and undo that especially like right here you know where the two textures are combined that feature is actually officially like impossible like it wouldn't happen that way the flow the, the flow wouldn't go this way it would it would miss here I would need to recalculate I would need to export this hype map bring it back into world machine recalculate all my shits and come back in uh, so that's why I don't like this method of texturing but I do agree that it has a lot of merit in a lot of ways it's useful in a lot of stuff just for me not everything however it could be a cool way to get the base of a layer down um, and then you come in and overlay on top of that but like I said given that this is just a static texture and it's not dynamically being generated uh, you want to make sure that you're happy with your terrain that it looks like what you want before you um, you know pretty much exactly what you want before you start baking out a whole bunch of maps and building materials and shit because as soon as you have to make a change to the shape of the the text of uh, the material you have to go back and redo all the maps granted once you have created a material network it doesn't really matter what textures are piped in so you can always re-import the textures if you need to make adjustments down the line but yeah that's it guys uh, hopefully you guys found that useful uh, and informative uh, war machine is a great tool uh, for the most part it's just a matter of just building you know shapes together um, and then eroding the whole thing uh, and in my opinion or in my personal experience I found that if you're trying to get a very specific shape if you really are truly after like I, it's caught to be this height over you know this much space between the mountains and this mountain has to be this height it has to be right there it has to be turned in that direction this road has to go right here this flat plane this plateau has to be right here because of this and that and this and that all these millions of reasons why this has to be an exact method but you still want to erode it um, I would suggest overbuilding and puffing out your terrain to make room for the fact that the erosion is going to come in and strip it all down uh, because remember erosion is just ripping away you know over time it's wind water and everything like that just grinding away the the surface of the of the terrain you know the, the rock the dirt and everything they just get blown away and it just wears down over time so wearing it down you know it's kind of like if you want it to be a specific shape yet still eroded you have to overbuild the terrain you have to make your mountain a little bit taller than it needs to be your plateau needs to be a little bit higher than it needs to be you know things like that um, so keep that in mind it's a, it's a big balance it goes back and forth quite a bit this network can get absolutely insane if you really want it to I mean there's no reason why you can't fill this entire area you know um, and just go crazy like that but really for the most part if you stick to a combination of generators layout generators combiners and noises and keeping in mind that you can mask these things um, then you're good to go and there's there should be no reason why you can't just make any shape that you want and getting it to look natural is, is a simple matter of throwing the erosion filter on there I mean there, it just does the magic for you you don't really have to worry about anything once it's done I mean I did not really do much here I just added the filter you know and it made it look nice like this for me so and it you know like I said it comes in here and the height is one for one for the for as far as I can tell the elevation range is the same I don't it doesn't feel any different here in UE4 I was having issues in UDK where my elevation was really high so I had to take my terrain down just just as a note if your terrain is happens to be too tall or not tall enough you can scale this non uniformly and it doesn't actually have much of a dramatic effect it does I don't think it has any effect on the um the way that the collision works. So let's say, hey, I only want this 50% as tall as it was. Just scale it 50% in the Z. The collision and everything is still going to work. Uh, Non-uniform scale does in fact work. Or I can say, vi con, you know, vice versa. I can say, hey, I want it to be two and a half times as tall. And now we've got some really steep shit going on here, you know. So depending on how you want to do it, um, this isn't something that you can necessarily or necessarily want to do in real time. But this kind of scaling, you know, vertical scaling is perfectly fine. Horizontally, I would I would stay uh, uniform here. I would keep the X and the Y the same, uh, just just in case. I, I believe it, it should probably actually be a requirement. 
but if we want just one for one, you know, all we got to do is set everything back to 100%. This will scale back down. And that was the original. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit pause, sign, and off. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. If you have uh, any questions, let me know. Uh, if you have any ideas for any other tutorials, let me know. My plan right now for the next tutorial is probably going to be um, shooting AI, like AI that is basically a copy of the player character. So try to make AI that's as close to another player as possible, or at least challenging to fight. That's my next goal, so I'll be working on that coming up soon. And it's Hippos signing off. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for the support, and I'll see you guys in the next one.